It's tea time in Ireland, and I'm excited to learn how to make the perfect scone at the Bali Knockin Cookery School. Let's go. Have you here? Welcome to Ballynock and Cookery School. Thank you. Come on. So, Mary, this is where all the action is. I'm so ready. So, a really good scone mm -hmm. should be crispy on the top, okay, crispy underneath, and when you open it up in the center, it should be like cotton wool. Mm. So, we're making scones, not stones. Got Just it. Saying. Got it. <laughs> scones, not stones. I can handle that. Here's our flour. So, you can see this is our unbleached. Mm -hmm. We call this cream flour. Okay. First thing we need to do is we're going with baking powder to nice heaped teaspoons. So now a pinch of salt goes in. So it's only a pinch, this is important. This is called caster sugar. Okay. And if we're on to tablespoons now. Okay. We're going to the big spoons. Okay. Hands in, we did wash our hands beforehand. Yep. So we pop our hands in and we go like this. I'm kind of a lazy cook in that mm -hmm. sense. You could sift this, mm -hmm. but I like doing this way because I actually like to touch the ingredients mm -hmm. and get a feel for them. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry now that you've got a flour mount coming good. at you. Yeah, sorry about that. So this is our beautiful butter. It's such a beautiful color of yellow. We have this great bit of rain in Ireland. Yes. Mixed with sunshine. Yes. That means our animals are outside all the time. Mm -hmm. And it gives us beautiful beef, beautiful lamb, but great dairy product. Ah, uh -huh. You just slice, slice, slice. Everybody has a different technique, but this is the one I learned from my grandmother. Okay. And actually where we're standing, this is the old milking parlor. Wow. Yeah. So we're sheep farmers now, so when guests come, they can see the beautiful sheep in the fields. I and know, I saw them. Oh, they're so cute. They're adorable. <laughs> <laughs> so now, you just stir around like that, and you just keep putting in another little drop of milk, bit by bit, until your dough comes together. It goes out onto your work surface like that, mm -hmm. hands straight out, mm -hmm. spin the dough. Tidy up the edges, you see? Okay. Palm on palm, press down, spin. It's like a Jane Fonda workout, right. isn't it? Press, <laughs> there we go. And you cut right on the edge, one right beside the other. Keep going all the way around. There we go, last one. These look great. And in they go. We've got to wait about 15 minutes, so would you like a little walk around our gardens? I'd love, love to show that. you what we've got. Mary, look pears. at our pears. <gasps> They're gorgeous. This one here, Mary, you'll never need. It's called Fever Few. It's for hangovers. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> it is coming to the end of the season now, but you recognize the purple sage, the dark sage. And then over here, then, we would have what you say, oregano. We say oregano. <laughs> Didn't know that. Oregano, oregano, tomato, tomato. I know, right? <laughs> so this is Ireland for you. I cannot wait to try one of these scones. Will we have a look? Yes. Oh my goodness, they are beautiful. Just in time. Gorgeous. Let's get them out, let's cool them off. So you pop them out here. Do you want to break one open? <gasps> oh, <laughs> the smell is so amazing. What do you think? Would that get us going? So I thought we'd have our lovely scones here. Oh yes. You sit yourself down there. Oh, with a spot of tea. This is our signature rhubarb and ginger jam. Beautiful. So we have to pop that on. Cheers, Mary. Cheers to that. <laughs> Amazing. Thank yeah. you so much for showing me how to make the perfect scone. You're very welcome. <laughs> it's been the perfect day with the perfect scones. I'm so excited to share this recipe with my family and friends back home.